Hi, everyone. I'm not back teaching full time yet, but I thought I would do a couple of videos on my own about uh, some of what I've been through this past year and what I've learned from my experience. And as many of you know, last year in uh, the end of August, I received a cancer diagnosis of a particularly aggressive form of cancer. And I've been through surgery and various radical treatments since then. And it has been quite an experience. And what I'd like to share with you, perhaps in more than one video, because I have some ideas, are insights that have helped me so much through this experience and perhaps they will help you through any difficulties you have in your life so uh, please god you shouldn't have any illnesses you should have no suffering and you should live until 120 in good health but we all go through ups and downs and when I got this diagnosis, I had a hard time for a few days. I was scared for a few days. And no matter how much I told myself that I had to put everything I've learned from Rebbe Nachman of Breslin into practice, it took me three days of Gehenna to get over the body response, which was fear, in order to start to listen to my mind and my heart and go and align myself with everything that I've learned over the years. So after three days, I began to feel and to express my gratitude towards Hashem for giving me this test, whatever the outcome may be. And I can tell you that they say uh, uh, fear is an amazing, uh, amazing uh, focuser. It brings us into focus. And certainly my prayers improved during this time, as well as the quality of bringing my thoughts back on track. It was something I was very conscious of. And I can say that by the fourth day, I was feeling back to my regularly, mostly happy self, despite the scary situation. Now, in lesson Lakute Moron 115, Rebbe Nach teaches that we all have to go through difficulties and challenges and obstacles in our lives, and that Hashem sends these things to us, especially those that fall into the category of judgments, when we want to or are ready to come closer to Him, but our spiritual level isn't there yet. And we haven't worked on ourselves enough, and we think we can take that leap, spiritually speaking, and go up a level without doing the hard work. And I'm not a hundred percent sure that this exactly defines what happened to me on a conscious level, but subconsciously I had felt that I was moving in a more spiritual direction. And Hashem needed to send me a judgment. And I looked at this judgment and I found within it so much of Hashem's love that I'm, I'm overwhelmed by my experience. And that is exactly what Rebbe Nachman tells us. He tells us that Hashem hides himself in our problems. He's there in our problems. He knows we have to go through a judgment, but he loves us so much. He loves us even more than he loves justice, that he cloaks himself in what we're going through. And if we look for him, we can find him. We can seek him out and we can find him. 
And so thus began my several months, many months, almost a year of hide and seek with Hashem. Hashem, this new problem has come up. This new disability or discomfort or pain has come up. Help me find you in the difficulties, Hashem. So finding Hashem in the difficulties is one of the things, one of the teachings that, thank God, I have learned that. And thank Hashem, he put it in my mind to remember this teaching. So another teaching I'm going to share with you today is the idea that our thoughts create our reality. And they really, really do. We live in our thoughts. Our thoughts are the interface between us and the world and our experience. And if we have negative thoughts, the world is going to be a dark and dreary, painful and horrible place. And if we have positive thoughts, the world will become a much sweeter place, even though we may have to go through difficult times. I'm not going to say that everything is going to be roses and everything's going to be easy. That's not true. But our experience of it, our interface with our experience will change when we actively think thoughts that lead to positivity. So my example for you is I had to spend, it turned out to be nearly eight weeks. It was supposed to be five weeks going to the hospital every day for a specific kind of treatment. And in this specific kind of treatment, there was a waiting room with a lot of patients. And it was a, I would say there was a, a, a sort of camaraderie and that patients weren't were friendly to each other. They weren't cold to each other and they were happy to say hello to each other. And, you know, everybody wasn't feeling well, but people were there to say hello. And um, I made a decision my first day that I wasn't going to go to the hospital every day and think of myself as a victim. I was going to go to the hospital every day with a mission. And that mission was, um, was to lift at least one person's spirits up, whether it was a patient or a staff member, and also to reveal the glory of Hashem. Now, I couldn't necessarily sit and talk to people in great detail. It wasn't appropriate. But what I could do at the simplest level, when people would say, how are you doing today? I could say, Thank God I'm getting by. Thank God. And when people were down, and I could see that they were down, especially people in the waiting room, I could go up to them and I could say, hi, I just wanted to tell you, you know, that you're, you're really looking a bit better today, if it was true. Um, or I just wanted to say hello to you today and tell you that I can relate to what you're going through. And thank God. That there's so many people who can share their experiences with each other and that we're able to talk with one another. And I would just make it my mission to appropriately, when it was appropriate, or many times where it was not appropriate, to find ways to be positive and uplifting and always to mention Hashem. At the end of my eight weeks, actually towards the end of my eight weeks, I would say in about the fourth or fifth week, uh, I had some exchanges with staff members that were, were quite ama amazing to me. Uh, one staff member had been going through a hard time with her children, and I told her I'd pray for her, one particular child, and she's a very warm, lovely person, and she opened right up to me. And at the end of the several weeks, she said to me, I want you to know, I've never prayed before. My family had no religion, she said, but I want you to know because of you, I am now talking to God every day. And that just gave me such a boost to hear that I wasn't just lying there 
for all that time getting these treatments like a vegetable. I was doing something positive. Um, the next feedback I got was from uh, another staff person who told me that whenever I was scheduled for treatment, they would try to be there even if it was their break because I made their whole day better. Because I would tell jokes, I would be happy, and so on. And I can't say I was flawless. There are times where I was very uncomfortable. But what I can say is it really gave me a reason to get up each day and think positively about myself, not only about Hashem, but about myself. And I just want to share with you that if you're going through a hard time, one of the best things you can do is to go cheer someone else up. And whatever situation you're going through, it could be a physical situation, a spiritual situation, a financial situation, I would encourage you to find a way at least once a month to do some kind of volunteer work. Because as, as many of you know, my husband, boy, she's a psychotherapist, and he and I have both had um, aligning experiences with people, well, me as a teacher and a coach, and boy, she's a psychotherapist. And this experience, sorry, that was my phone. I'm just declining the call. This experience has led us to know that one of the best uh, helps for depression is going and doing something for someone else. Not because you're going to compare your situation and say, oh, they're so much worse off than me. I don't know that that really makes anyone else feel all that much better because at the end of the day, at the day you go home with yourself and you're stuck with your own experience. But what it does do is it opens up a vessel, it creates a vessel for bracha, for blessing and salvations. Because when you give charity, get sadaka money, and when you do charitable works, good deeds, uh, visit someone who's sick, volunteer for an organization, volunteer to sit with an elderly person, keep them company for a few hours a week, whatever it is, when you do that, make space for more positivity in your life. Hashem sends you more positivity. So I would like to, I think I would like to stop here. Have some more, uh, more ways in which Rebbe Nachman's teachings have definitely helped me through this experience. If I'm brave enough, I'm going to post this. I'm thinking, am I really going to post this? It's so personal. But um, I, I just want to share with you that thank God, whatever we have to go through, thank God we can get through it. We can get through it. Hashem is only giving us what we can get through. And my situation, Baruch Hashem, is a, a fortunate one. And I have been very blessed of a lot, a lot of people praying for me. You know who you are. All of you saying to Hill Psalms from Yamaha, I appreciate it. I, I can't tell you more than you can imagine. And um, I think about you every day, by the way, all of you. And I've been very fortunate in that regard. Very fortunate to uh, have um, a lot of support from community organizations. I would say there's nothing like the Jewish community. I'll just I'll give a little shout out to our CCS, who are really fantastic, and um, Aid Lashalom as well. And uh, I guess I'm going to stop here and see. Maybe I'll do a new video on this topic another time if enough people are interested. And I wish you all a wonderful day. And if I get this up before Tuba off, then a very, very happy Tuba off. Take care, everyone.